Once, in the shadowed heart of an ancient forest, where moonlight danced among the leaves, there lived a wise and enigmatic wolf named Luna. In the whispering night, Luna's golden eyes reflected both the beauty and sorrow of the world. A tribe of humans nearby, driven by fear and rivalry, had been taking the lives of Luna's kin. Luna, desiring a bridge between the worlds of humans and wolves, decided to embark on a journey of transformation. In the sacred waters of the moonlit pond, Luna dipped her paws and the moonlight wove its enchantment. Luna emerged not as a wolf, but as a feral human girl named Kassa. In her newfound form, Kassa approached the outskirts of the human tribe settlement. Uncertain of their reaction, she observed from the shadows, mimicking their behaviors and learning their language by listening to their conversations. Days turned into nights, and Kassa cautiously made her presence known, leaving small tokens of goodwill, wildflowers, handmade trinkets, and gestures of kindness. The tribe, initially wary, began to sense a mysterious connection with the enigmatic feral child in the woods. Rather than succumbing to fear, the tribe cautiously approached Kasa when they saw her in the woods, and a fragile alliance was forged. Kasa, now fluent in the language of both worlds, taught the humans the secrets of the forest, the dance of the moonlit shadows, and the wisdom of the wolves. One day, as the sun dipped below the horizon, Kasa ventured into the heart of the human camp. She demonstrated her affinity with the forest, showcasing survival skills and a keen understanding of the natural world. The tribe, captivated by Kasa's unique abilities, began to see the feral child not as a threat, but as a bridge between the worlds of wolf and man. Luna's message transcended words, conveying the importance of coexistence and harmony. The tribe, in turn, shared their customs, stories and ways of life. A cultural exchange unfolded, weaving a tapestry of understanding and mutual respect between the wolves and humans. One evening, as the tribe huddled around a fire, Kasa beckoned to Luna's pack. The wolves, sensing the harmony between the feral girl and the humans, approached without fear. Kasa, with her newfound human voice, spoke a language that resonated with the wolves, and a sacred understanding emerged. Under Kasa's guidance, the humans learned the art of hunting alongside the wolves. The forest, once divided by fear, became a shared realm where both species thrived. As the moon rose high in the sky, a chorus of wolves and humans echoed through the trees, a testament to the harmony that had blossomed. From this collaboration, the forest became the birthplace of the first dogs, companions born from the unity of wolves and humans. The tribe, once hunters of Luna's kin, now found strength in cooperation, recognizing that adaptation was not a surrender, but a celebration of shared existence. In the moonlit tapestry of life, the fable of Casa Luna unfolds, reminding us that living in harmony with nature requires a dance of understanding. When fear transforms into appreciation, and when the strengths of individuals are celebrated, a symphony of adaptation emerges, echoing through the ages like the ancient whispers of the forest.
you ever heard of feral children? Kids who've grown up without human contact, who were raised by animals instead? Stories about the wild child that blur the line between make-believe and reality have been around for ages, popping up in different corners of the globe, each with a unique twist. A child, abandoned or lost, thrust into the wild, suddenly becomes one with the creatures who call it home. They learn to take on the habits of their new family until they blend in like they were born there. Sometimes, being part of two worlds is a bonus for them, shielding them from the ugly side of society, or letting them tap into their wild side, or giving them the inside scoop on animal survival savvy. Eventually, they may return to civilization, but who says they can't go back to their wild ways again? Some unlucky souls find themselves stuck right between two worlds, unable to fully commit to either human society or animal kingdom. What are the parallels between wolf society and human society? In wolf society, packs are fundamental social units, mirroring human communities. Both wolf and human societies exhibit striking parallels in terms of social structures, communication, and familial bonds. Many Native American tribes have stories and beliefs centered around wolves and wolf spirits. Wolves are often regarded as powerful and symbolic creatures, representing various qualities such as strength, intelligence, family bonds, and the connection between the natural and spiritual worlds. The Hopi people have Kachina spirits, and there are wolf Kachinas that play a role in ceremonial dances. The wolf Kachinas are believed to bring guidance and protection. And yes, the famous double bun look of Princess Leia from Star Wars is a Hopi-style hairdo. And back in the day, Mexican revolutionaries would rock it too. The force is strong with this hair. The Lakota Sioux have wolf as a prominent totem animal. Wolves are often seen as teachers, and their behavior is studied to understand lessons about family, loyalty, and survival. The Navajo culture associates the word for wolf with witch, and believe that wearing a wolf skin could bring a transformative experience. Stories of werewolves and skinwalkers can trace roots back to Navajo beliefs. However, the Navajo also have a more positive view of wolves. They conduct healing ceremonies that call upon wolf as a powerful force for restoring health. In Cheyenne mythology, the wolf is considered a symbol of loyalty and family. There are stories of wolves guiding and protecting individuals within the tribe. The Nez Perce people have wolf as a totem animal, and they believe that wolves possess strong instincts that can guide humans. There are stories about the spiritual connection between wolves and the Nez Perce people. The Pawnee tribe in Nebraska and Kansas had a close association with wolves, using the same hand signal for both wolf and Pawnee. They were even referred to as the Wolf People by neighboring tribes. The appearance and disappearance of the Wolf Star, Sirius, indicated the wolf's presence in the spirit world, running down the Wolf Road, also known as the Milky Way. These examples are just a glimpse of the diverse Native American cultures and their rich traditions regarding wolves. The wolf's symbolic significance varies among tribes, but its representation as a spiritual guide, teacher, or protector is a recurring theme across many indigenous belief systems. Hey there, I'm Largo, we're in the lair, and welcome to Wolves Within. We're looking at some new ways of storytelling this year, and this is one of them. The story we just went through is Moonlit Harmony with Casa Luna. And this section of the video is to kind of do the inside baseball, look at uh, how these things come about. And the way I do that is with what I call wordsmithing. And so let's do some breakdown on just the thought process of how things go from idea to story. What is wordsmithing, you may ask? Well, it's like taking a piece of rough iron and crafting it into a shiny masterpiece. But instead of metal, it's words. 
A wordsmith is a craftsman, heating up ideas, hammering out the kinks, and cooling them to perfection. All in the name of making words as clear and stylish as possible. I would say traditionally a wordsmith is someone like a speechwriter. You know, the right speech could change the world. The wrong speech could lose an election. Um, it's important that what we say has weight and can influence in some cases. Uh, certainly the best fiction leaves us better off than where we started, in my opinion. So that's kind of where we're going with the wordsmithing idea. When I begin wordsmithing, uh, these are the brainstorm foundations for everything I write. The premise, the name, the spark, and the payoff. Those are the four pillars that I build any story around. So for the fable of Casa Luna, I decided to flip the script. And so, what if? What if the roles are reversed? What if a wolf was craving a taste of human existence? Imagine her fascination with all of our human quirks, our intricate social lives, our language, tool-making skills, art, music, and other human delights. So that's kind of where I start. It's an idea. Um, what if? Always ask the question, what if? And whatever follows is usually the beginnings of a good story. So, next is the name. And names hold so much power. Names have gravity to them in great storytelling. You always remember names like Achilles and Hercules and Shazam, you know? Um, it's an important part of how you're telling the story because how you choose a name can influence how people respond to your protagonist. So as a wordsmith, I sometimes let the story guide my character name choices. In other words, I will get an idea and start working on a story and I will choose a name that fits where the story is going. Other times, I let the name lead me to the story. So I may have a name in mind that I really like and has some significance to me, and I'll write a story around the name. Casa, for example, is a name that dances between Native American Hopi roots and English. This name means fur robe dress, and it's no surprise that it conjures up our wolf girl protagonist perfectly. I like the name and decided to see where we could go with it. Next is the spark. So what is going to set off this journey for this character? What, in this case, would make a wolf swap her fur for a human suit? Something powerful must be driving her. Maybe it's a thirst for survival, a yearning to learn, or a hunger for companionship. Whatever the reason, it's got to be big. You know, we as uh, carbon-based life forms and, you know, whatever creatures are in your stories, uh, we need motivation. That's the spark. That's the thing that gets us up off the couch or out of our humdrum to do the journey, to go through the story. Um, so that's a good place to start when you're trying to figure out where you want to go. You have to have a beginning. In times of crisis, taking drastic action becomes necessary to ensure survival. Making significant changes can be vital to secure the future of the group or individual. So, in this case, let's make survival the spark. Next comes the payoff. What is Casa Luna's ultimate goal? What is the moral of the story? For me, Good storytelling usually has a moral. Uh, it may not be so uh, blatant that it hits you in the face, or, you know, it should be something that as you're going through the journey with the character, that uh, maybe it makes you think about things a little differently, or it's 
subtly nuanced in the way the story progresses that it causes you to sympathize or empathize with where the character is, what the conflict is that they're dealing with, and maybe um, how they should resolve it. So in this case, a wolf girl's need for humans and wolves to cooperate for the survival of both groups could lead to a positive transformation for both societies, unlocking new possibilities. As far as a moral, uh, the fable is a quest for acceptance. It follows Luna's journey as Casa to find acceptance in the human world. The story teaches the importance of compassion, acceptance, and embracing differences. I'm also uh, I'm very fascinated with the origins of how domestic dogs became uh, what they are from wild wolves. So uh, we throw that in the mix as well, just because I think that's kind of fun. So now all the bones are there and I could leave Casa Luna as a simple fable, just as is, or I could revisit her and expand the story into an epic tale. Not really the point of the exercise, but the idea is that something has been created. It's out there. It's in a very rough, simple form just for this YouTube video. But now I could take it and run with it. At some point, if I decided I wanted to write this into a huge epic novel and really dive deep into what we've started here, I could. And uh, that's kind of the neat thing, is even something as small as a journal entry or a poem or a fable. Um, starting small gives you a sense of accomplishment. You eat an elephant one bite at a time. So I start with a short story premise, an idea, and if I like it, uh, it goes into the to be readdressed later pile. And maybe I'll flesh it out and, and really go somewhere with it. That's the hope, uh, as soon as I get around to it in my desk. The fable of Casalona and the other Wolves Within Ventures are essentially self-care practices at their core. And what do I mean by that? Well, are you howling for some self-care? Well, try wordsmithing. Adding some creative writing to your day-to-day -day routine is like giving your brain a VIP pass to the spa. Not only is it super fun, but it can also transform the way you think and feel. So why not dive in and start writing your heart out? Whether it's jotting down some poetry, spilling your guts in a journal, or weaving an epic tale, writing is the ultimate form of self-care. And I will leave you with that thought. Ultimately, I like to write because it, it's stress relief. It's a form of therapy for me. And that's something we'll, we'll explore in further episodes of Rules Within. And... Uh, maybe that will be of benefit to you. Even if you're not a great writer, you don't have to be. You simply have to look at it as an, ex an exercise in helping your brain get off of the tablet or phone or whatever stressors you have in your life and do something else. So try storytelling, wordsmithing, if you will. I think you might find it agreeable. So with that, I hope that uh, you found some value in this. If so, please let me know in the comments and enjoy.